Hi, Dyslexic Genius here, Brett Hurt. My phone number is 864-236-1680. A question came up online about what are the screw size for a Victor number two reproducer? The screw size is a 164th right here. Now, how did I determine a 164th? Well, years ago, a friend of mine gave me one of these screw pitch gauges and it goes from 0 80 all the way down to 3 quarters, if you can find one. But I'm telling you, it's a 164 thread size. Okay? How do I measure that little screw right here? When I'm ordering a screw, how do I know what I'm buying? Well, how you measure a screw is this way. I'm using this great bolt that I, this great bolt that I pulled out of a Edison Opera. Don't believe me. You measure from here to here. So you put your ruler in here like that. And that's your thread length. Okay? Because these are 100-year-old screws and they don't measure factor them to standards, SAE standards anymore. These little screws are just over or just under 3 16 So 3 16 and a half. So you could get a quarter and you could shorten it down. Okay, sometimes you don't have to. So now what comes up is, years ago I made this thread thing out of brass. It's much faster for me than using this. When you take these apart, as I discussed on my diaphragms, cleaning the diaphragms, the copper diaphragms, crud gets down in these, these screw holes on these reproducers, okay? I blow them out with my air compressor, but if you have a can of compressed air with a little plastic nozzle, you can blow it out. If you're screwing the screw in, let's say into here, and it's not, it's getting tight. Okay, it's like binding up, the threads are binding up. You have to stop and you need to get two taps, 164 taps. Well, this one has a point on it, it's normal, and this one doesn't, and this is called a bottoming tap because this screw in here is a bottoming screw. So you have to have a bottoming tap. If you blow it out, then by hand, you can run it in here, or gently, you can use the tap handle like this. The tap handle, put this in here, and then you can gently, you can gently tap this out. You'll need to do that sometimes These threads are boogered up. They don't want to screw in. So you use the pointed tap and you just put the point in there and clean the threads up. This is a lot of fun. These are just pointers. The last pointer is this also is the same thread size, a 164th. For the needle bar holder here, to hold in the needles. That screw is the same size. Make sure that when you put them together, I'm gonna to reiterate that you should oil those. Oil the screw a little bit when you screw these in. This is a replacement screw. and that's an original. This is a lot of fun in, a, in the hobby. This reproducer has a massive hole right here. I have to replace the diaphragm. I use a jeweler screwdriver that fits the screw slots very well. When you do the screw, you have a slot like this. You don't want a thin screwdriver and you want to push down and turn because you'll see th threads that are boogered out like this on the slot. And that's because you're not using the right screwdriver. 
When you're taking them apart, like on a reproducer, these get boogered up from dirt and grime over the years or rust in because it's steel and the brass. You need to push down firmly You need to push down firmly and then turn the screw. Just don't put the screw in and go like that or it's going to burger out the top of it and it's going to look very badly. You see this a lot on phonographs. Even at the factory they did that. I always fix those on machines. You know, it's a lot of fun and that's my tip for the day.